Um, Erika Tatiana Camacho, I'm an associate professor in applied mathematics at the School of Mathematical and Natural Sciences in New College, which is at the West Campus of Arizona State University. Uh, my academic work deals with uh, modeling, mathematical modeling, uh, degenerative diseases of the eye and degeneration of photoreceptors. In particular, I focus on retinitis pigmentosa, which is a degenerative disease that causes the rods to mutate and die, and eventually the cones, which are perfectly healthy, also die. I also focus on age-related macular degeneration, trying to understand what are the causes and the mechanisms that lead to photoreceptor degeneration. In developing countries, blindness is caused mainly because of economics, of not having resources that are appropriately allocated to get to all the communities that need it. But in developed countries, it's really the degeneration of photoreceptors that we don't know how to stop them from regenerating. They're very specialized cells that cannot be um, reproduced, or, and so we need to understand what are the pathways that we could intervene in order to be able to um, stop them from degenerating. That's one of my research, but one of my biggest passions and one of the reasons why I'm in academia is I love mentoring. I love mentoring and creating opportunities for individuals that don't have the opportunities to achieve their goals, especially individuals that come from the same background where I come from. I was uh, the first one in my family to graduate from high school, even though I'm the second to the youngest out of five siblings. I was the first one to go to college and the only one to go to graduate school and get a PhD. So uh, I want individuals like me to start to have those possibilities. So I love being involved in it, things that create opportunities and ways to be able to advance individuals that are either invisible or underrepresented and that have been underserved, especially in academia. So um, one of the things that I'm doing in the Adv ASU Advanced Project is leading the professional development team. And one of the things that we're doing is creating initiatives that will enable women, especially women that are in the mid-career, to be able to advance in their disciplines and become leaders, broadly defined, within their discipline, within their community, and within ASU. We want them to be able to have opportunities to really maximize what they can do and the impact they can have at ASU and in, in the world, not just in ASU. So we're really trying to create initiatives that will be able to fit everyone's path, where we're gonna be inclusive and include everyone's voice and everyone's trajectory. And the initiatives that we're focusing on are gonna really benefit including everyone, including men, administrators, in order for them to be able to help their faculty and know what they need to do to be able to help them advance and be able to sponsor them or mentor them in ways that they haven't done it before. Uh, ASU is great at taking care of students in terms of being able to really include all the students. In fact, you know, in, we always say we're measured by who we include, not who we exclude, and that's really true for the students. But in terms of faculty, just like any institution, ASU has really forgotten about the professional development of faculty, especially those faculty that are not the normal set of faculty that we see in a classroom, that we see in a university. The ones that are underrepresented or the women that come with many different characteristics. This is why we're focusing in intersectionality because there's different um, characteristics that lead to compound microaggression, implicit bias, and many negative things that create impediments for faculty to be able to advance. And we want uh, faculty to have resources that will allow them to advance, that we are gonna make it easier for them, that is not gonna be this unknown or this uh, black box that only certain people have the key to and they could get in, that everyone will be able to get in, that people will be able to access those professional development initiatives that we're creating from wherever they are. Even if they have very short time, if they have a very busy schedule, they're gonna be able to, to access them. We're gonna really create in interventions that are gonna address different learning modalities. So the individuals with different uh, type of learning modalities could really learn and optimize what they're learning from what the initiatives that we're creating. And we are really gonna uh, leverage from the online ASU infrastructure, which is very robust, which has done great in terms of teaching. And now we're gonna take that and we're actually gonna use it for professional development. And not just for uh, for opportunities here within ASU, but also to expand it to everyone else, because we're gonna have everything online. We're gonna be able to match the online initiatives with the in-person initiatives that we're gonna create and the ones that are already there. 
we're going to curate all the things that are being done on campus in terms of professional development and put them in a place where it could be a warehouse where uh, individuals come in, just access those resources. One of the things that really excites me about this project is that I really think it's going to transform ASU, but not just ASU, it's going to transform academia. And it's going to allow individuals like me, who are first generation, who are underrepresented minorities, like I'm Mexican American, and coming to academia and being successful has been a painful road, has been very difficult. And I want to be able to create initiatives that will change that for other individuals, that we're going to be able to open the door and make everyone feel welcome. In SACNAS, which is the Society for Advancement of Chicano and Native Americans in the Science, we have a saying that we welcome everyone. They, in order for you to be a scientist, you don't have to leave your identity at the doorway. Well, we want to embrace who they are, and we want to create initiatives that really target individuals from different, multiple identities, multiple groups, that we are really becoming inclusive and creating a pathway for people to be successful by considering different pathways, an infinite number of pathways. Um, I'm really excited because I love mentoring, I love creating opportunities for everyone, and I think this is really creating the opportunity to really um, balance academia. Academia has been very imbalanced in terms of who are the people that really are able to go all the way to the top, especially at the faculty level. It has really neglected certain populations, certain, certain groups, and I think the advanced projects really allow that opportunity to start moving forward, and we're going to be leveraging from what many other advanced projects have done, but we're really going to turn it around because we're going to create something that is going to be online, accessible to everyone, and we're really going to be inclusive. That's one of the things that we want to do. We want to create something that is going to fit, benefit everyone and that is really going to focus on those individuals that have been underrepresented.